Hello guys and welcome to Apex Salesforce Tutorials. So, today we are going to discuss some of the 28 Salesforce important interview questions. So let's get started with it. Sections which are covered in today's interview questions are integration and external systems, technical, comparative, scenario based and data management and Salesforce architecture and design. All these topics play an important role in our Salesforce interviews so and we'll be learning about each of them separately. Please watch the video till the end and let's get started with it. First is explain the differences between a role and a profile in Salesforce. A profile is a set of permissions and settings that determine what a user can do within a Salesforce. Often profiles are tied to departments such as sales or support groups. Roles on the other hand determine what a user can see and access within Salesforce. Roles are most closely linked to hierarchy within an organization. Second question is what are governor limits in Salesforce and how can you overcome them? Governor limits in Salesforce are essentially runtime limits that help prevent the platform from using too much space on a single record or action. They help maintain performance and keep Salesforce running efficiently. For example, a SOSL query has a governor limit of 2000 records being retrieved at any given time. To overcome governor limits, I need to write an efficient Apex code, change multi-trigger Apex code to single trigger, write SQL queries outside for loops or use trigger handler when writing trigger logic in Apex. There are also several, some governor limits that are essentially paywalls. For these, I would like purchase larger limits from Salesforce to get past them. A third question is, can you describe how record level security is enforced in Salesforce? Record level security are the records in each object a user can view or edit that they have access to in their profile. Simply put, it enables you to limit what objects each user has access to. Firstly, the organization by defaults or OWD, we set the baseline access for different objects, determining whether they are publicly readable or writable. Then we have the role hierarchy which extends access to the higher levels, higher level roles, allowing them to view record owned by users below them in the hierarchy. Additionally, sharing rules can be set up to grant access based on a specific criteria and manual sharing enables users to share individual records with, other, with others on a case-by-case by, case by case basis. Our fourth question is, how is the width sharing keyword used in Apex within Salesforce? These are generally asked for Salesforce developer interviews alongside some of them may ask in admin interview questions also but it is an important interview question. So the with sharing keyword is used to enforce record level security on a class and extend sharing access on a particular object. When a class is declared with the key with sharing keyword, it ensures that the sharing rules and OWDs defined in Salesforce are applied to the data access within the class. This means that the class will respect the record level access permissions of the current user and users with will only be able to access records they have the appropriate access to based on their role profile and sharing settings. Our fifth question is how do you handle bulkification in Apex triggers to avoid hitting governor limits? Our answer is that I make sure to process records in bulk rather than individually. Instead of querying and updating records individually, I use collections and SQL queries as long as they are not within the four loops to handle multiple records simultaneously. This way, I reduce the number of database queries and DML operations, uh, which helps uh, stay within the governor limits. Additionally, I use helper methods to perform complex logic and avoid a repetition of code, uh, ensuring streamlined execution and minimizing resource consumption. Our sixth question is, can you explain the differences between workflow rules, process builders and Apex triggers? We'll create a more major pro video on this particular topic because it is a vast topic here we are giving a simple statement for this for the sake of time so the answer is workflow rules are simple if then statements process builders allows more complex processes with multiple actions and apex triggers provide full programmatic control over record processing our seventh question is how can you implement one to many relationships in salesforce you can use the lookup and master detail fields to create one to many relationships in Salesforce. These fields help connect records from one object to records in another project. With a lookup field, you can link one record from the 
first object to one record in the second object. Uh, meanwhile, a master detail field enables you to connect multiple records in the second object to one record in the first object. Our eighth question is what are the various types of sandboxes available in Salesforce and when would you use each? In Salesforce, there are different types of sandboxes which are like to safe spaces to test changes before making them or we can say deploying them onto the prod org. The main types are first is full copy sandbox. It is an exact copy of your live Salesforce org. It's great for testing big changes or doing any kind of training. Our second is developer sandbox. It's for a single developer to build and test new things without affecting the real data. Our third is developer pro sandbox. It's similar to developer sandbox but has more data and storage limits for bigger projects. Our last is partial copy sandbox. It has a sample of your real data and is useful for test testing with some da real data but not all of it. Our ninth question is how do you handle exceptions and errors in Apex code? In Apex code we can handle uh, exceptions and errors to prevent the pro program from crashing and to give a better experience to users. When something unexpected happens we use Shrike as blocks to catch and handle the error gracefully. This works by enclosing code with an exception in a try, uh, try block, which is then enclosed in a catch block if the try block itself shows an exception. Instead of showing a clunky error message, we can display a friendly message to users or log the issue to developers to fix. Handling exceptions helps uh, keep the program running smoothly and ensures a better user experience. Our tenth question is explain the difference between a custom setting and a custom object in Salesforce. A custom setting called a record table in say is a small simple table to hold settings or configuration we can use across the whole organization. It's easy to access and doesn't count towards data storage limits. On the other hand, a custom object is called a configuration table. It is a bigger, more complex table where you can store any type of data you want. It's great for storing lots of information but counts towards data storage limits. Our 11th question is what is the role of schema builder in Salesforce? The schema builder in Salesforce is a graphical tool that allows developers to view and manage the objects and relationships in their Salesforce org. It provides a visual representation of the data model making it easier to understand and modify the schema. Our 12th question is how do we handle data imports and exports in Salesforce? To import data, we use data and tools such as data import wizard and data loader to bring data from spreadsheets or other sources into the Salesforce. For exports, we use uh, tools like uh, data export and ex data export service to get data out of Salesforce and save it as files. It's like making a copy of the information so we can use it outside of Salesforce. Handling data imports and exports helps keep the information up to date and lets us work with uh, data from different places easily. Our 13th question is how can you perform a mass update on records in Salesforce? Performing a mass update on records in Salesforce is like changing a large truck of records all at once. One way to do this is by using the data loader tool where, where you can upload a spreadsheet with the updated information and match it to the right record in Salesforce. The tool will then apply all the changes to the, all the matched records in one go, saving time and effort. Another method is using the Salesforce reports and dashboards feature. You can create a report the, to filter and find the records you want to update and then use the mass edit option to change and multiple records simultaneously. We can also set a custom list view on Salesforce. To do this, you will fire first. Need to enable special permissions on the profile user interface, including the mass edit form from this and line editing and enhance the list option. From there, you can create a list view and specify different record types and feasibilities. Once you have set up the list view, click the bulk edit checkbox at the top of the list, select all the records, any changes you make while all the records are selected and will update the entire list. Our 14th question is how can you schedule a batch apex job in Salesforce? You can schedule a batch apex job in Salesforce using the process or we can say the process steps. Create a batch apex class that implements database.batch interface. Second, implement the three required methods start, execute, and finish. Third, create an apex job by creating an instance of the batch apex class in an apex job. Fourth, schedule the apex job using the system.schedule method.
Our fifth question is how can you optimize the SQL queries to improve performance? To optimize, to optimize the SQL queries in Salesforce, you can do following things. First, ensure that your queries are selective and filter on indexed fields. Second, avoid querying large numbers of records in a single query. Third, use aggregate functions like sum, count, average to avoid unnecessary fields. We can use relationship queries or we can say joins. Use custom index functions. Use limit clauses. Bulkify queries in Apex. Avoid nested queries. Cache data where possible. Monitor query performance. Describe the differences between a trigger and a workflow rule in Salesforce. Answer is triggers and workflow rules in Salesforce are used for making or for automating actions, but they have different capabilities. Triggers are used for more complex and custom operations, while workflow rules are limited to simple actions like field updates and email alerts. Our 17th question is what is the role of summary field and how is it used in Salesforce? Most people know about Roller Summary Field, it is present there, but they mostly doesn't know how we can use it, so we are getting it here. Our role of Summary Field calculates values from related records and displays a summary of the results of the parent record. It's commonly used to perform calculations like sum, count, average, maximum, or minimum on child records and display the result on the parent record. Our 18th question is what is the use of at the rate future annotation in Apex? We use at the rate of future annotation to identify and execute a method asynchronously in Apex. When a method is annotated with at the rate future, it runs in a separate thread independent of the current transaction. This allows the method to be called and executed later rather than immediately within the current context. The main purpose of using the at the rate future annotation is to offload time consuming or resource intensive tasks like from the main transaction, making the application more efficient and responsive. It's commonly used to tasks like sending email notifications, performing callouts to external systems, or processing large volumes of data. Our 19th question is how do you integrate external systems with Salesforce? APIs allow data exchange and real-time communication between Salesforce and external applications. You can integrate external systems with Salesforce using various methods such as first is REST, bulk, pub, sub, and SOAP APIs, usually with OData protocol, outbound messaging adapters for non-OData APIs, Apex callouts, middleware tools, third-party connectors such as Salesforce connectors, and webhooks. A 20th question is, can you explain the differences between a lookup relationship and a master detail relationship in Salesforce? A lookup relationship in Salesforce creates a link between two objects, allowing users to link records from one object to another. A master detail relationship creates a parent-child relationship where the child record inherits certain behaviors and permissions from the parent. A 21st question is, how do you handle data migration from one Salesforce org to another? Data migration from one Salesforce org to another can be done using the data loader, the change data capture or Salesforce data integration tools. It involves uh, extracting data from the so source org, transforming it as needed and loading it into the target org. Our next question is how do you handle data deduplication in Salesforce? Data deduplication in Salesforce involves identifying and removing duplicate records to maintain the data accuracy and integrity. To achieve this, you can use tools like Data Import Wizard, Data Loader, and or any third-party deduplication records. Our 23rd question is how do you implement uh, validation rules to enforce data quality in Salesforce? To implement your validation rules in Salesforce and enforce data quality, go to the object settings, navigate to the validation, validations rules sections, and create rules with a specific criteria and error messages. These rules will be triggered when users attempt to save records, ensuring that data adheres to their defined criteria and maintains its accuracy and consistency. Our 24th question is, describe how you can, you can maintain data privacy and security in Salesforce. Firstly, you can establish a strong user and authentication measures such as through Salesforce multi-factor authentication options or by creating or by connecting the platform with uh, outside authentication apps like Okta for added security. You can also define user profiles and roles to control data access and encrypt sensitive data to rest and in transit. Additionally, you can regularly, regularly monitor user access and usage patterns, conduct security audits, and 
provide ongoing training to ensure users will follow best security practices. On top of that, Salesforce enables you to export the org data in CSV files. This serves as a backup of your information in the event of a security breach or data loss. 25th question is, can you explain the differences between a static and dynamic SQL queries in Apex? In Apex, uh, static SQL queries are written at compile time and are fixed, meaning the query structure and uh, fields are known before execution. These are written within the square brackets mainly. Dynamic SQL queries, on the other hand, are constructed at the runtime as strings and allow for building queries based on dynamic conditions or variables, offering more flexibility in handling varying query requirements. Our 26th question is How do you handle wrong long running processes in Salesforce? To handle long running processes in Salesforce, you can use asynchronous Apex such as Batch Apex or Queable Apex. This breaks down the process into smaller chunks that can be executed separately and efficiently in the background. Our 27th question is Describe what custom labels are used for in Salesforce and when to use them. Custom labels in Salesforce are used to store the text values that can be easily translated into different languages. They provide a way to reference these text values in formulas, Visual Force pages, Apex classes, and Lightning pages and components, allowing for better internationalization and localization of Salesforce applications. Use custom labels when you need to store static text or messages in a centralized and translatable manner. This provides a more flexible and scalable approach to managing text content. They are often used for things like help or error messages as they can be set to appear in various languages depending on where a user accesses the platform from. 20th and last question is how do you optimize Visual Force pages for better performance in Salesforce? To optimize Visual Force pages for better performance in Salesforce, you can minimize the use of complex queries and large data sets and reduce the number of components and controller actions on the page. This helps you avoid governor limits. Thank you for diving into the world of Salesforce with us. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments and hit that subscribe button for more amazing Salesforce tutorials. Remember to ring the bell so you never miss an update. Happy Salesforce!